What up, what up? Today I have a very special topic about fear and the relationship it has with death, which I've learned over this past week. Now this channel is about transparency and today I'm going to be very transparent with you. Throughout my whole life, I've grown up afraid of everything. Talking, I was afraid of people. I was afraid of losing. I was afraid of rejection. I was afraid of being wrong. I was afraid of being abandoned. I was also, I was, I was so afraid. I lived in so much fear that I could not stand up in class and announce my name to the class of who I was. That's, that's how afraid I was about everything. And along the way, I've learned to get past most of those fears. Fast forward a few years ago, I, when I really started understanding what this was, I, I remember I was trying to get out of my shell and start meeting random people. So I would do this whether in social events, networking events, I just go to any place where there's enough people and I'd start talking to random people and trying to form a connection. Now, when I first started doing this, which was in college, I was terrified. I was absolutely crippled, okay? And what's what was interesting about that was throughout my life, uh, of all the fear I've been coming across, I've also been in a lot of high-stakes situations. I've been in situations where, let's just say, they make talking to a random person like absolutely a walk in the park so when i would try and go up to these people and make friends i would feel like my heart was pumping so hard like i had death like crippling fear right it just felt like death and i would catch myself feeling like that and i'd realize this is not normal this the the way I'm feeling in proportion to what's happening around me is not normal. How could you feel like I literally felt I was going to die if I went up to someone and just introduced myself? It felt like death. And that kept looping in my head over and over. Why does this feel like death? And then it clicked. It hit me. That's because it is death. Now, what was interesting to me was I lived in fear. But at the same time, I was I came across situations in my life that were very life-threatening. And I mean, I was close to dying on more than one occasion. I'd been almost hit by a car. Okay, I was a kid. I was like 10 years old. I was trying to run across the street. I, I've seen people shoot at each other within like meters distance. And I mean, I, nothing happened to me, but I, I thought I was going to die in that situation. And I've been... I've ran for my life. I've heard bullets whizzing over my head before. And what's crazy about it, not to say that, you know, I've faced overwhelming odds more than other people. No, that's not the point. The point I'm trying to make is that, and try and get this, it is really crazy. The fear that I felt when I was running for my life was the exact same feeling as me trying to go and talk to someone who are and trying to make friends with them. The magnitude was different, but the underlying emotion was the same. And that's why it felt so familiar to me. That's why talking to someone felt like death is because it's the same feeling I felt when I was about to die. And your because your brain can't get context for what's happening inside, whether it's fear or dopamine. It doesn't know, it just takes it for what, and it just goes on its primal uh, infrastructure. And fear is meant to stop you from dying, is to fight for your survival. Um, so when I started realizing this, or the tie between the two emotions, uh, I started going more and more into situations where I was put into that same fear. And every time I felt that fear, I would go straight into it again because I knew that at this point I was trying to conquer the fear of death. And when you get in touch 
with the idea of your death, things start to change. You start to take things less for granted. You start to take life, no matter how hard of a situation you take life. You don't take it for granted because you're constantly living on the edge. If you had a gun to your head every day, then that breakfast would be the best breakfast you've ever had every morning. Okay, you'd never take single instance for granted, and that's part of coming to terms with your death because it's a scary thing. We're built for survival. But we spend all that time sheltering ourselves to, you know, to survive. Because every fear we have, whether it's putting yourself out there or expressing yourself, that fear you're rooted is rooted in fear of death. So it's no wonder nobody takes action. It's no wonder people are afraid of themselves because they feel like they're going to die. It's the same thing. So the reason I'm telling you this is that if you are afraid. Recognize that one, the danger outside is a lot less different now, but your brain is interpreting it differently. And two, it's not meant to push the fear away, but to feel it and still go about what you were gonna do anyway. Feel the fear and do it anyway. And the reason I just I'm sharing this today is because I feel like death right now. I'm afraid right fucking now, and it feels like death again. I've been through a lot of uh, high stakes situations. I've I've seen how I've felt and reacted in those situations, but this is a whole league on its own. I've never felt this kind of deep seated fear of dying, or it's actually fear of abandonment. But it feels like death, and I'm able to still sit here and shoot you this video in the hopes that maybe, just maybe one person can take something from this. And I just want you to know, whether you know me or you don't, uh, whether you're my friend or a close one, if you're watching this, I just want you to know that I'm extremely super sorry. I'm sorry for the pain I might have caused you. Because right now, going through this, feeling this pain of fear of abandonment, which literally feels like I'm going to die. If I've ever made you feel that same way, I couldn't, I can't express how sorry I am if I did that to you. Because I wouldn't wish this feeling on anybody. And what I'm starting to realize is that I mean, I've abandoned a lot of people. I've blocked my love from giving my love to a lot of people. And it's only normal that I'm faced with this situation where I feel abandoned. And it's blown out of proportion right now because, again, it's that fear of dying that just because it's, it got that, you know, maybe it's that inner child that's afraid to be abandoned and then which meant equal death. But whatever it is, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry if I've ever made you feel that way because it is devastating. And the reason it hurts so much is because you feel a deviation from like that source of, of the wholeness you get when you're faced with death and you recognize life. And... I'm sorry if I made you feel that way. And I'm sorry because making anybody feel this way means, you know, I've been scammed and I've went into isolation and I've detached, I've separated versus trying to be collaborative and joining. And if I made you feel that abandonment, then I'm sorry. I really am sorry. And... Let's just go through this. Let's go. Let's face our fears. Let's not separate. Let's not detach. Let's recognize that anyone who is detached has been scammed. And that at their default, we're all whole. So let's try and move towards that. And I hope you can conquer your fears today. My fear is that I die and not done enough. Recognize yours. 
couple more things I want to add to the previous video is that why it's so important to realize these things or why I believe it's crucial that you make these connections because if I never did that I would not be where I am today and I would not have learned anything along the way here if I never took those chances to I'd be a much sadder person by not facing uh, the fears that I had because I was like I said I was afraid of everything so I would have just lived like inside a shell if I hadn't done anything and the major thing that I realized apart from the whole gratitude for life that's that that is one is obviously happiness a second thing is when remember your prime goal as a species is to survive so when you have these built-in mechanisms to help you survive it doesn't mean you should jump towards death right you don't have to put yourself in life-threatening situations to get the same examples that I did or to get that same epiphany that I'm trying to get to you. You don't have to dump in all your money or savings and move to a different country or all these things. You don't have to do that. It's accessible right now through your breath. Because look, if you ever seen someone who's dying at a hospital, what's the first thing, what's the last thing that goes away? You know, kidneys fail, kid, liver, stomach, everything slowly, slowly degrades. But the last thing before someone dies that's still active is their breathing. Your breath is your life force. So if you want to get a glimpse of death, just <gasps> hold your breath and you'll get it within a minute or two. Boom, you can stay weeks without food. It can barely last a minute without breathing. So if you ever need to tap into that part of yourself, it's through the breath. And what the breath taught me is now when you're closer towards death, when you start to realize your death, you start to see things at a holistic level, right? You're almost going back to the source, the source of where you came from, whatever you believe in. Um, you're going back towards that because now you're facing your death. And when you're looking at things from that holistic standpoint, you start to feel for the interconnectedness of everything and what you start to realize through pain okay i'm learning this through pain i didn't run away from it. i went through it without drugs without coping mechanisms i just sat there and i took it and i'm taking it right now and what i can tell you which is why i was apologizing before because when you feel when you're connected again and you feel the empathy towards how you have made people feel throughout you because if you're about to die and you start to re recognize what's actually important in this life whether you make the best content whether you build the biggest businesses or have the most amount of friends at the end of the day you're gonna die the world is gonna die the internet will cease to exist the whole universe will cease to exist so what's that all mean anyway you start to realize these things as you're going through it and you start to remember what you actually truly care about and what are the things that really matter to you. So yes, I did make a lot of mistakes in the past. I did maybe make people feel this fear of abandonment that I've given to them through my actions. At the time, I thought I was protecting myself and doing what's right by me. But here's the thing. I, w I was scammed, I was disconnected from the source because I wasn't facing, like sometimes you need to feel that pain to actually be able to build empathy with someone. And when you activate that part of yourself by facing your fears, by going into death, your brain goes into like hyperdrive. You start to hit parts of your brain you've never experienced before. Like how when I risked everything, I, there was no room to be lazy. It came out of me. I wasn't even thinking about it. I was, boom, I was at it because I was running away from the tiger. You get that? So you actually start to hit higher parts of your higher self. You activate that part when you go through these fears. And like I said, you don't actually have to put yourself through real danger in order to get this. You can do this 
by just going inwards and through breathing and um, whether it's like it's spiritual death or uh, financial death or physical death, like it's all the same. All you need is the fear. The fear is tied to death. That's all you need to remember. So I implore you to go through that and to find your true power through that. By going through that fear, you will find your true power as a human because that's what you're built to do is to survive. So use your fear for your, to, to bring you upward, to uplift you. And back to the pain thing and causing people pain and real, the lesson that I learned throughout this week through fear and through fear of abandonment, which meant death to me. I realized that anyone else that's probably causing this pain on others is unconscious. They've, they've been deluded. They've been detached from their source of who they are, which I believe we are in our essence connected to everything else. When you, when it boils down to it, we're all from, we're all the same. We're all from the same energy. Everything is energy. Okay. That bad, that low vibration is what gets you detached, hurt people and not realize the pain you might cause. Because if you were any conscious person would never inflict pain on another person if they felt that same pain, right? A, a normal, conscious, healthy mind per wouldn't do that. So if you are experienced with someone who's, who has done that, or if you've done that to someone, or if I've done that to you, remember that we've been detached, we've been scammed, and our true selves are not like that. And we are not those people. We are actually the part of ourselves who are connected. And sometimes that's what it takes to get connected again. It's like, it's almost like if presence or like connectedness is this tunnel, okay? This tunnel with a very narrow entrance and it's the light at the end of the tunnel. And you're trying to go through this tiny tunnel with your big old head, okay? And you've got all this baggage. The rest of your body is this baggage and you're trying to shove your entire head through this tiny hole to get to the end of the tunnel. So obviously it's going to hurt. The more you push, the more you can feel that baggage just ripping out of you. Okay, trying to get to the other side. Your body, technically, the physical world. We get so tied up in the physical world that we get drawn away from our source, which is the energetic world. A lot of people talk about this, but really think about this. The more we get attached to this world, the more we're detached from the whole. And th that's when you start hurting your friends and your loved ones and um, because you've become attached to the worldly present. Because if you felt your death, you would realize that these are some things that are what matter or what really carry on. If there is an afterlife, I don't know, man. I'm not even assuming there is. I'm just saying. So to get to that presence, to that wholeness again, sometimes you have to go through the tunnel and just rip off everything out of you, that the physical attachments you've had, and it's a painful process. So again... This is not a call for help. I'm not going to die. I'm not calling for Kumbaya to come join me if I've hurt you. This is not what it is. I think it's just time to start talking about these things. And I just didn't want to rob this opportunity that I could share with someone. If this video reaches you, if it helps you, then I'm glad. I'm glad I spend the willpower to record this. Take care. Remember, everything is fleeting. Life is short. It really, it's a flash. That doesn't mean don't respect your boundaries or people who really have wronged you doesn't mean you should forget about them, but I think the main point is to be aware. Is to be aware of where everyone is coming from. Because everyone in their perspective, from their paradigm, where they're at, they're probably right. So let's just take the big, big boy approach and look at things from a holistic level and get in touch with our source. Stay frosty, brother. <laughs>